When most people think of video games, characters such as Mario and Sonic come to mind. Yet, in the age of single player games with 40 hour stories and in depth lore, gaming has become a new platform for serious stories to be told. Games like God of War, which takes on the world of Greek and Norse mythology with an original twist. Or an emotionally driven game like The Last of Us, which has now been adapted to an Emmy winning episodic series. Not to mention the large open world games like Cyberpunk, which star huge celebrities such as Keanu Reeves. Although it seems like these games are starting to appear left and right in the era of these powerful gaming platforms, meaningful storytelling in gaming has been around for a long time. One studio a lot of game developers can thank for creating such groundbreaking works of fiction is the one and only Rockstar Games. Known for the controversial yet highly praised Grand Theft Auto series, behind the chaos of the GTA universe, among many other Rockstar Games classics, is one man who served as lead writer for the series, co-founder of the company as well, the one and only Dan Housen. <laughs> Dan Hauser was born in London, England in 1973. He grew up alongside his older brother Sam near a video library where he states his love for storytelling and cinema began. Not much is known about his life before stepping into the gaming world other than the fact that he attended the University of Oxford and received a degree in geography. During the early 90s, his brother Sam became head of development at BMG Interactive, a video game publisher based in the UK. Dan began to work with his brother at BMG Interactive, where they both discovered a game by DMA Design simply titled Race and Chase, a simple cops and robbers game which they felt had a lot of potential. They would then acquire the rights to the video game and change the title to Grand Theft Auto. The following year in 1998, BMG Interactive, along with DMA Design, were acquired by the US-based Take-Two Interactive. Dan would then travel to New York where, along with his brother Sam Hauser, they would form Rockstar Games. They would publish the next entry in the GTA series, but for the third entry, the team wanted to go from a 2D open world to a 3D one. On October 23rd, 2001, Rockstar Games released Grand Theft Auto 3. Serving as both a producer and the lead writer for the game, Grand Theft Auto 3 broke barriers in the open world genre. In this game, you play as the silent protagonist, known as Claude Speed, seeking to get revenge on your old girlfriend Catalina. Sorry babe, I'm an ambitious girl. You're just small time. Betrayals will become a reoccurring theme within Dan's writing, by the way. All of this taking place in a satirized version of New York known as Liberty City. Dan helped develop the open world of Liberty City filled with satirical posters, foul-mouthed pedestrians, and a chaotic set of radio stations. Now, more hits from the 60s. 1760s, that is. <laughs> In order to create the cinematic feeling he was looking for, Dan stated he looked back to a lot of crime movies such as Goodfellas. He worked with a few known actors in order to create that cinematic immersion as well, instantly putting the game into the mainstream by hiring such prolific actors. Here's a few of them. Remember, no one messes with my girls. I want you to destroy their laundry vans and mangle any triad gimp that gets in your way. I see nothing but good things for you, my boy. Although a pretty intriguing revenge story, Dan would admit the script was written along with the game's development team as it was meant to show off the various mechanics of the game. He would have the opportunity to write the story he wanted with the next entry in the series, moving from the gloomy skies of Liberty City to the bright and sunny beaches of Vice City. If nobody understands you, we do. Slash FM, music for the me generation. Nice. 
success, baby. Taking place in 1986, the story follows Tommy Versetti, who is fresh out of prison as he is sent to Vice City, a parody of Miami, Florida. He is sent there by his boss, Sonny Forelli, in order to establish a drug empire for the crime family. <laughs> oh, shit. This first deal, however, goes south, and now Tommy has to navigate the criminal underworld of Vice City in order to get the money and the drugs back from the botched deal. That was my money, Tommy! My money! You have my personal assurance that I'm going to get you your money back and the drugs. In order to write a much more captivating character, Dan and the writing team gave Tommy a speaking role, and he was voiced by none other than the star of Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, Ray Liotta. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. You're out of touch. With a speaking protagonist, Dan was able to write better relationships with the protagonist and characters within the game. Two amazing examples of this are the relationships Tommy has with the paranoid lawyer, Ken Rosenberg, Oh, oh, for God's sake! And the cool, yet hot-headed, Lance Vance. The way I see it, we two hombres in a strange town. We need to watch each other's back. Dan heavily based the aesthetic of the game, as well as story elements, on the 1983 classic, Scarface. Also the popular show, Miami Vice. After the success of Vice City, Dan would go back to the drawing board to develop another title for the series. If GTA 3 took place in early 2000s New York and Vice City in 1980s Miami, then it was time to have a story take place in the 90s, and there was only one place Dan felt had the world's attention during that decade. Of course, we're bringing you the best in West Coast hip hop and all the newest cuts. And y'all sit tight, don't touch the dial. Yeah. The year is 1992, and our story follows Carl Johnson, known as CJ, as he returns to his neighborhood of Grove Street after his mother was murdered in a drive-by shooting. CJ soon learns that things aren't going great back home, as there's a drug epidemic, senseless gang violence, and corrupt police. I'll take that, Hernandez. Hey, that's my paper, man. That's money. This is drug money. All of which lead him down a very unexpected journey. Oh shit, here we go again. Dan was inspired by movies that took place in California during that era, such as Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society. The game's story this time around is more chaotic than mature. As Dan mentioned, he wanted the game's satirical nature to highlight the weirdness of American consumerism. Despite the story not taking itself very seriously, it still is a very fun story with an all-star cast. Same old CJ. Buster, straight Buster. Oh shit, run! After the success of San Andreas, Dan Hauser would help write GTA Liberty City stories and Vice City stories. He would also write another popular video game titled Bully in 2006. Because you know what happens to liars? No, no, I'm not lying. We kick them in the balls! <laughs> Essentially, that game is just if GTA took place in a high school. It's a very fun game. Back at the offices of Rockstar Games though, the company commissioned their San Diego division to work on a brand new game engine, one that allowed for a more realistic style of gameplay and graphics. This new engine would be titled the Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, RAGE for short. Rockstar Games would release their first game using the powerful engine, the highly technical and advanced game which was much more powerful than any of their releases at the time. Rockstar Games presents table tennis. Yeah! Oh, and two years later in 2008, they released Grand Theft Auto 4. One of the most well thought out stories in my opinion, Grand Theft Auto 4 follows the story of Eastern European immigrant Nico Bellic as he arrives in Liberty City. According to Dan, he felt the writing should improve immensely as the graphics did. We were consciously trying to go, well, if video games are going to develop into the next stage, then the thing isn't to try and do a loving tribute or reference other stuff. 
As a result, Dan helped write a much more in-depth protagonist from the previous games, one which addressed their psychopathic nature as well as their desire to do good deeds. I was very young and very angry. Maybe that is no excuse. Roman? Roman! Ah! Are you sleeping, you fat no! fuck? The more serious writing within the game would give weight to the player's decisions. A major example of this would be the game's two endings. One of the themes within this game is the weight violence has on our protagonist and those around him. For the next project Dan would work on, it would explore the cycle of violence that exists within life. To accomplish this, the next setting would be in the Old West. Now what you want? My name's John Marston. The year is 1911. Former outlaw John Marston is forced by the government to hunt down three of his former gang members, Bill Williamson, Javier Escuela, and the man who brought John into the criminal lifestyle, Dutch Vanderlyn. The story stands out from most westerns as it explores the dying days of the Wild West by taking place in the year 1911. Dan found the trope of cowboys conquering the wilderness to be very mythical and unrealistic, which is why he took interest in the transitional years America had from the Old West to the modern world. This theme is visible through the character of Dutch Vanderlyn, as he makes it clear that he is fighting to maintain the outlaw lifestyle which has died due to America's evolution. Our time has passed, John. Violence is a never-ending cycle for this Western. John killed his old gang members for the government, and the government killed John after using him. Although he sacrificed himself to protect his family from the dangerous lifestyle of being an outlaw, this didn't stop his son Jack from seeking revenge on the man who killed his father. I ain't going nowhere, old man. You've got your revenge thus enforcing the cycle of violence which has plagued the old west of before. You really don't hate this music, so stop pretending. Please, stop it! This is Mojo with Lady, a house classic from 2000 pop fans. Enjoy! Lady, hear me tonight, Taking us back to Los Santos, Grand Theft Auto V follows the story of three main protagonists. Franklin Clinton, the ambitious gangster. Look, man, it's been a real honor, homie, but I gotta move forward in my life. It seems like all I do is let people tell me what to do and I do it and nothing changed. Michael DeSanta, the experienced and retired criminal. Any more bullshit comes out of your mouth, you're gonna learn all about my past glories firsthand, you understand? <laughs> Absolutely, sir. And Trevor Phillips, the unapologetic psychopath. Guns and crank in this area go through Trevor Phillips Enterprise or they ain't going! Dan was always fascinated with the story taking place from three different perspectives, experimenting with this concept a little with the GTA 4 expansion packs. With the ability to instantly switch between any of the three characters, it can lead to unique moments within the game. It's the last entry in the Grand Theft Auto series as of now, and also the second best selling video game of all time. But despite this, I feel the chaotic nature of the game doesn't fully capture the genius of Dan Hauser's writing. His next and most recent project, in my opinion, ended up being one of the best works of fiction ever written. By 1899, the age of outlaws and gunslingers was at an end. America was becoming a land of laws. Even the West had mostly been tamed. A few gangs still roamed but they were being hunted down and destroyed. Rockstar Games presents Red Dead Redemption 2. Serving as a prequel to the first game, 
Red Dead Redemption 2 follows the dying days of the Vanderling gang as they are slowly dwindling due to the law closing in on them. Our main protagonist is Arthur Morgan, loyal to Dutch Vanderlyn and the rest of the gang, including our old friend John Marston. Development and writing began in early 2011 and by the time the final script was done, 2,000 pages had been written, requiring 2,200 days of motion capture work. Dan states that the second game is outlaws being tamed in the Wild West and how it can change the world for our protagonists. However, like the first game, one of the central themes is redeeming oneself, and Arthur Morgan is no different. I'm afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of, Mr. Morgan. Take a gamble that love exists and do a loving act. In the midst of Dutch's leadership, which does more harm to everyone instead of good, Arthur Morgan begins to face his own mortality, as he is diagnosed with tuberculosis which cannot be treated. He has lived the life of sin, and now wants to do good by those who have always seen the good in him. You must now decide the fate of Arthur Morgan's final days, continue to live with low honor, or try to redeem yourself in the end. Mr. Red Dead Redemption 2 was the last project Dan would work on under Rockstar Games before leaving the company in 2020. He has since then founded his own production company, Absurd Ventures. He has yet to release any projects under the company. Throughout his career, Dan faced many criticisms of his work, stating his games promote violence within the real world. Criticisms from activists such as Jack Thompson to U.S. politician Hillary Clinton. However, Dan's work ethic and serious approach to video game writing has found him respect within the gaming world. Some people think Dan is a dick, but he wasn't to me. We always worked ourselves to the bone, but it wasn't coming from the top down. Sam and Dan always rolled up their sleeves, and they were always there. They never left us holding the bag. Even though Dan no longer works at Rockstar Games, he has left a long-lasting legacy which will remain immortalized as gaming continues to grow as a medium to tell meaningful stories. He broke barriers, he created a gaming dynasty, but most of all, he embraced chaos. Take a number nine, fat boy. Give me a number nine, just like his. Uh, let me get a number six with extra dip. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. 